It was a day that should have been perfect, the wedding I had always dreamed of. But as the reception began, the feeling of unease that had been growing for weeks suddenly intensified. The MC approached Noah and me at our head table, whispering, Olivia would like to say a few words. My heart sank. Olivia, Noah's mother, had always made me uncomfortable, ever since our very first meeting. She wasn't just overbearing. She had a sharp, cutting nature that made me constantly second-guess myself. And now, she wanted to speak in front of everyone. Noah squeezed my hand under the table, sensing my tension. It'll be fine, he murmured. I wanted to believe him but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to go terribly wrong. We looked up to see Olivia standing confidently at the center of the room, microphone in hand. There was no turning back now. Hello, everyone, Olivia began, her voice echoing through the hall. I'm Olivia, the groom's mother. She spoke with authority, as if she owned the room. I have something important to say about this marriage. My breath caught in my throat. This was supposed to be a joyous occasion, a day filled with love and happiness. But I knew Olivia well enough to realize that her words would likely be anything but supportive. As the wife of the founder of Wilson Electronics, she continued, I have raised Noah to be a successful, driven man. But now he's marrying into a family that, let's just say, isn't quite on our level. Gasps and murmurs spread through the crowd. My face burned with humiliation but I forced myself to stay calm. Olivia wasn't done yet. The bride's family is so poor, she said with a sneer. They'll have to work until the end of their lives. I felt as if the ground had opened beneath me. As I sat there frozen in place, I couldn't help but recall the first time I met Olivia. I had been so nervous, wanting to make a good impression on Noah's family. But from the moment I walked through the door, Olivia's disdain for me was clear. Instead of welcoming me with warmth, she had immediately launched into personal questions. What do your parents do for a living? She had asked, not even giving me time to sit down. When I told her they were farmers, her expression had shifted from curiosity to something more like disgust. They're still working? She had asked, her tone dripping with judgment. Were they really young when they had you? Were you a teen pregnancy? I had tried to brush off the sting of her words, explaining that my parents grew strawberries and that retirement wasn't really a thing in our line of work. But it had been clear from that moment that Olivia saw me, and my family, as beneath her. Over the next few months, Olivia's attitude toward me only grew worse. Every time we met, she found new ways to belittle me and my family. During the wedding preparations, she had asked with a mocking smile, Are you really going through with this wedding, even though you're so poor? I had forced myself to remain calm and replied, We're not that poor, Olivia. But she immediately shot back, You're definitely poorer than us, though. Noah had been furious, slamming his hand on the table and saying, Mom, this is a marriage between two people and it's unbearable for you to keep criticizing Emily's family. But Olivia was relentless. She muttered, We'll see about that wedding, and left the room, her words hanging ominously in the air. I had thought, hoped, that Noah's confrontation would put an end to her behavior, but it seemed that it had only made her more determined to ruin our special day. And now, here we were, on the day of the wedding, and Olivia was doing exactly what I had feared. She stood before our friends and family, attacking my background in the most public way possible. I hesitated to bring this up during the ceremony, Olivia continued, but for Noah's sake, I must. My heart pounded in my chest. What was she going to say next? The bride comes from a poor family that will have to work until the end of their lives, she repeated, as if the first insult hadn't been enough. Noah, who had been trying to stay calm, finally lost his patience. What are you doing, Mom? He demanded, his voice tight with anger. This isn't the time or place for this. But Olivia seemed unfazed. She turned to Noah and said, I'm only telling you the truth. You wouldn't listen to me before. So now I'm making sure everyone knows what kind of woman you're marrying. I could feel the weight of Olivia's words pressing down on me, suffocating me. I had never felt more humiliated in my life. The guests were whispering among themselves, and I could see their eyes darting between me and Olivia. 
But before I could even think of how to respond, Olivia took things even further. Noah, she said, her voice hard and cold, you've been blinded by this woman. She has a dark past, and you're too foolish to see it. The room fell into a stunned silence. A dark past? What was she talking about? I had no skeletons in my closet, no secrets that could justify this kind of accusation. But Olivia was determined to paint me as someone unworthy of her son. I've tried to handle this delicately, she continued, but now I have no choice. Noah, you're being seduced by a vixen, and if you don't wake up soon, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. As Olivia's words hung in the air, I braced myself for the worst. I expected the crowd to turn against me, to believe Olivia's lies. But then, something unexpected happened. A soft chuckle broke the silence. At first, I thought I was imagining it, but then more laughter followed. Soon, the entire room was filled with the sound of people laughing, some quietly, others uncontrollably. Olivia, who had been so confident just moments before, looked around in confusion. What? What's so funny? She stammered, clearly not understanding why no one was taking her seriously. One of Noah's relatives, Benjamin, finally spoke up, wiping tears of laughter from his eyes. Olivia, you're the last person who should be laughing at anyone's financial situation, he said. Weren't you the one who borrowed $200,000 to start your business? Olivia's face went pale. She opened her mouth to respond but couldn't find the words. As the laughter died down, more voices chimed in. Yeah, and didn't you borrow money from all of us siblings too? One of Noah's cousins added. You've got a lot of nerve talking about someone else's financial situation when you're the one who's been asking for loans for years. Olivia looked like she had been struck. She had always prided herself on the success of the family business, Wilson Electronics, but it was becoming clear that she hadn't built it alone. Her perfect image was starting to crumble before everyone's eyes. Noah stood up, his voice firm but calm. Mom, this has gone far enough, he said. You've always acted like you're above everyone else, but the truth is, you've borrowed money from nearly everyone in this room, and now you're trying to shame Emily and her family? That's not going to happen. The room was dead silent, everyone waiting to see how Olivia would respond. Before Olivia could say anything, my mother stood up. She had been quiet throughout Olivia's tirade, but now she was ready to speak. Olivia, she said, her voice steady. You've been talking a lot about our family's financial situation, but let me tell you something. She paused, and the room seemed to hold its breath. We may be farmers, but we're proud of the work we do. Our strawberries are a special variety, and each one sells for $500. We've even been recognized by the Guinness World Records for our efforts. I saw Olivia's eyes widen in surprise. She had never taken the time to understand what my family actually did, and now it was coming back to bite her. My mother continued, We work hard, and we take pride in what we do. There's nothing shameful about that. And as for working until the end of our lives, well, we're doing it because we love what we do, not because we have to. Olivia's face was a mask of disbelief. She had spent so long looking down on my family, convinced that we were beneath her. But now, the truth was out. Her attempt to shame us had backfired spectacularly. I could see the realization dawning on her face. She had lost. The crowd, which had been so tense just moments before, was now buzzing with excitement. People were whispering to each other, clearly impressed by my mother's words. Noah stepped forward, putting his arm around me. Emily and her family are some of the hardest working, most honest people I know, he said, his voice strong. And I'm proud to be marrying into their family. Mom, if you can't see that, then maybe you don't deserve to be a part of our lives. Olivia opened her mouth as if to argue, but no words came out. She looked around the room, seeing the judgment in the eyes of the guests. She had been defeated. The rest of the reception passed in a blur. Olivia slumped back into her seat, too shocked to speak. The atmosphere in the room shifted from tension to celebration as people raised their glasses to toast Noah and me. Despite Olivia's attempts to ruin the day, we had come out stronger.
As I danced with Noah later that evening, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. We had faced one of the biggest challenges of our relationship, Olivia's constant hostility, and we had come through it together. But it wasn't just about surviving the day. It was about the future we were building. Noah's father, James, approached us at the end of the night and quietly told us that he and Olivia were separating. She's crossed too many lines, he said. I take pride in hard work, and I can't be with someone who doesn't respect that. His words only solidified what we already knew. Olivia's control over our lives was finally over. As Noah and I started our new life together, we both felt a sense of relief. Olivia had always been a looming presence in our relationship, but now, with her out of the picture, we were free to build the life we wanted. My parents continued to run their successful strawberry farm, and Noah took over as the president of Wilson Electronics. We were both dedicated to the values of hard work and honesty, determined to raise our future children with those same principles. And speaking of children, I was pregnant with our first child, and Noah couldn't have been more excited. We're going to raise our child to respect the value of work and family, he said one evening as we sat together, dreaming about the future. I smiled, resting my hand on my belly. After everything we had been through, I knew that our child would grow up in a home filled with love, respect, and the understanding that hard work always pays off in the end.